This morning um, we're going to be talking about what is anxiety. So anxiety is a response to a perceived threat. It happens at all three parts of the think, feel, act triangle, if you remember that. So we've got thinking, um, anxiety thoughts, it's all too hard, I can't do this, there's too much, those kind of thoughts. Feeling, um, where you feel your heart racing, your palms are sweaty, you're shaky, you're tense, that kind of stuff. And the other um, side of the think, feel, act triangle, um, acting, you're, maybe you're struggling to sit still, maybe you're withdrawn from your friends, maybe you've put your head on your desk, maybe you're studying all night and not um, getting anywhere. There's nothing really new there. We all know um, what it's like to feel like that, what it's like to feel a bit anxious, but sometimes it can help to look a bit deeper to understand um, what's going on. So I thought we might start today with a little bit of brain science. So one th way to think about your brain is to use your fist. So if you think about your um, forearm and your wrist as being your spinal column and this bottom part of um, your brain here, um, where, you, where your hand meets your palm, you can think about that as being the oldest part of your brain, which is, this, which is some people refer to it as your reptile brain. I don't know if you can, how well you can see that. Um, but that's the part that we share um, with all animals, including reptiles. So I have my reptile here to um, represent that. Um, and that part of the brain is responsible for all the things that we do um, automatically. So it's responsible for breathing, for digesting, for reflexes, for automatic um, responses. Like, for example, when you <gasps> jump when you hear a loud noise. Further up, right on the inside of your brain, so we can represent this by, by um, your thumb tucked in there, is the mammal part of your brain. I don't know how well you can see that, but we'll, we'll go with that. Um, and that's right on the inside. That's the part that we share with um, all other mammals. Um, so monkeys, dogs, cats, sloths. Um, and that's part is this is the part that's responsible for our emotions. Also for memory, which is quite important for anxiety, um, which we might come back to another day. Oops. Mammal brain fell off. Um, then lastly, right on the outside is the cerebral cortex which is the human part of our brain, um, which is where we do our thinking, our learning, our planning for the future. So some, some mammals have parts of that. You probably, you prob I mean, certainly your dog can learn stuff um, and definitely monkeys um, they, and the, um, the ape family can certainly learn. Um, but, but humans have the biggest, most developed part, um, frontal, um, cerebral cortex. And right at the very front is our prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for um, all that complex, rational, logical reasoning kind of stuff. And only humans have that. Although my cat is very smart, just saying. So I'm going to take these off here. And we've got, so we've got the mammal, and we've got the reptile, and we've got the human. But I'm not going to put that on my forehead. Um, so coming back to anxiety and the what is it question, when your body and mind perceive that there's a threat out there, when there's a wild animal is going to eat you or when your house is on fire, the part of your brain that responds first is the emotional part. So that's the inside part that we share with mammals. And its job is to get you out of there. So you've probably heard of the flight or fight response, and that's what it wants you to do. Um, so it sends out a great big burst of neurochemicals, which are the, the, the chemicals that your brain um, works with, um, to get you moving and it tells the reptile brain to divert all its resources to your um, muscles to get you moving so it diverts the um diverts its resources away from your um from your um non-essential services like digestion is one of those and that's why you can feel a bit queasy or sick when you're anxious because um it's the feeling of the blood coming away from your stomach because it doesn't need to do that. You don't need to be using that right at the moment. You need to be using your muscles to get away from whatever it is. And also, um, it's why your muscles tense up and get ready to move. It also diverts the, um, the energy and resources away from your brain. So your um, cerebral cortex basically um, goes offline for a little bit because, because your, um, your emotional brain, it doesn't want you thinking about it. It doesn't want you trying to make a rational decision about... Um, getting away from the saber-toothed tiger because that takes too long. It just wants you to move. So all this is super efficient if the threat you're facing is a dangerous wild beast. Anxiety, even panic, is what your brain does to keep you safe. However, this type of response is not so handy if the threat is a room full of people who happen to be your form class or if it's an assignment that you need to do today. You don't need to run away from those um, and your thinking brain is really useful for dealing with them. But 
your mammal brain can't tell the difference. Um, and it still fires all those 111 type chemicals. And that's when anxiety is kind of a problem. And that's when you really need to get your whole brain back online. So there's the million dollar question. How do we do that? And we're going to come back to that over the next few days. But there is a short answer. And that short answer is oxygen. When I said the mammalian brain gets the reptile brain to divert its resources to fighting or flighting, um, how it does that is it pumps all the extra blood carrying oxygen to your mu muscles and away from your brain. Um, so what you need is more oxygen to make up the shortfall. And where does oxygen come from? It comes from breathing. So at its simplest, the most helpful thing that you can do when you're feeling very anxious is to take some long, slow, deep breaths because that gets oxygen to your brain and there's more to go around and everything can start working again. Demonstrating deep breaths. This is a deep breath that goes into your tummy. This, that's not a deep breath and that's not going to help very much. Um, so, so deep breaths into your stomach, bringing everything back online. And that's your brain science lesson for today. Um, tomorrow, more about breathing and also some other ideas for making anxiety work for you like it's meant to, to help you get stuff done, but um, not stop you from... Um, but not stop you from, um, oh dear, that wasn't a good ending, was it? So ha ha making anxiety, helping anxiety to work for you to get things done, but not taking you offline so you can't achieve anything and you feel terrible. Have a lovely day.